and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges. And um, I just really wanted to honor you for listening in once again on this episode. You know, I feel like so many times us as ladies, we have so much to talk about. And um, the ability for us to support each other, to honor each other is, is so important. Throughout time, there has been so much issues between women. And growing up, I had such a hard difficulty um, getting along with girls. I remember being eight years old and being at my church and having the mean girl click group that never approved me, that I was never good enough, that um, I couldn't dress cool like them. I couldn't buy the cool um, white eyeshadow that they had. And I remember them having boobs before I did. And <laughs> I just felt like there was nothing that I could ever do to be able to really fit in. Do you ever feel like that, like where you feel like you couldn't fully fit in somewhere? The reason why I want to talk about this is because throughout the years, I started to learn how to get along with women. But for a very, very long time, I felt like I could not. I had so many issues around women, around feeling like I couldn't trust them, feeling like they were judging me or didn't really like me or being fake towards me. And this could possibly potentially be a problem, right? The whole intention here is to honor women. So how do you heal from that? How do you get to a place where at one point you feel like you kind of trust women and now all you want to do is serve them? Life can get really uncomfortable sometimes, especially when you are in a healing process especially when you're looking at areas of your life that are not working and having a willingness to want to bring those things up to the surface in order for you to heal them and move past them. This is applicable in your life um, and sales and and if you're running your own business as a mother, um, as a leader, it's applicable for you to be able to be the absolute best version of yourself for you to be able to communicate with anybody regardless of what situation comes up and for you to be able to feel like your past doesn't come back to haunt you every time you try to move forward with your life. I remember in high school, this one moment really changed my life forever. I'm in high school and I'm a freshman in high school and I am celebrating, you know, Valentine's Day. And I remember that there was a boy across the street that I thought was so cute. And um, it's like after school, off through the bus, and like he comes upstairs and, you know, we kiss. And like I thought I was messing around or we really weren't doing anything much, nothing too severe. And I remember the next day I go to school and um, 30 girls walk up to me in my cafeteria. 30 girls, 30, literally 30 girls surrounding me, yelling at me. And one of the girls that were with these people was apparently this boy's, this stupid boy's girlfriend. My God, no way did I know that he had a girlfriend in the first place. And no way do I know why she knows about me. But apparently she knows about me and all of these girls are over and in my face, calling me names, telling me all these horrible stuff about who I am and what I did and, and um, like the identity of who I am. And at this time, again, like I was still a good girl. I barely did anything, you know, and I just uh, uh, lost my faith in women empowerment that day. Um, you know, he, this boy basically told everybody because he thought he was really cool, um, that, you know, I had been with him and I had not, not even close, not even remotely close. Um, to be honest, I was too scared to do anything. Um, and I felt bad. I felt like I was a prude or whatever it was. And, you know, I just, it's, it's really, really sad. You know, <laughs> it's sad that a young little girl that had no knowledge of anything, you know, was put in a situation where she felt bad because she was too scared to do anything. And then the next day she goes to school and the boy tells everyone that she did do something that she didn't. 
And at the same time, this guy has a girlfriend and all these girls are coming up to me. And I, I hope it's okay that I'm vulnerable with you and telling you this story. Because I feel like so many people don't have a willingness to talk about shit like this. Because stuff like this happens every single day. And our inability to um, be able to empower young women with information and knowledge and show them how worthy they are and how incredible they are and how amazing they are is the number one reason why we're having so many issues with girls crossing their own boundaries and doing things that they don't want to do or feeling inadequate or feeling not good enough or lowering their standards in every area of their life. So I hope it's okay that I'm going here because um, this whole situation with all these girls calling me names, it did something incredibly powerful for me that I feel like a lot of us do, which is it kind of changed my identity of who I got to be. All these women in front of me calling me names, being mean to me, and I felt like I was walking into school with a scarlet letter on my chest and I hadn't done anything. And for four years in high school, I was thought of as like the slutty girl in high school and I had done nothing. I was still a virgin and um, apparently everyone thought I was a slut. And... <laughs> This was so infuriating and so frustrating, and I felt like I couldn't be myself. I felt like me telling the truth, people didn't believe me. I felt like I didn't have any friends. I felt like every single girl thought badly of me or judged me, or I felt like the coolest guys at school would want to talk to me. I had, you know, somebody in the football team want to talk to me, um, a few football players that like want to take me to homecoming or anything like that, you know, seniors that want to talk to me, like the hottest guys in school. And then they found out that I wouldn't do anything with them. And then they didn't want to be with me. And this was like this ongoing pattern till, you know, finally at one point in my life, I was just like, fuck it. Like I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. And the reason why I'm telling you this story, even though it's making me feel super uncomfortable right now, is because you are not a blue frog. I had a friend teach me this story at one point in my life, talking about whether or not you are a blue frog. And I feel like influence is super powerful. And sometimes you have people in your life that say you're one thing when you're not. And sometimes you start listening to them. And when you listen to them and when you change your identity to be something that you're not, your behavior will change to be something that you're not. So if anybody ever comes to you and is saying something that you're not, I always want you to remember the story of a blue frog. Are you a blue frog? Yes or no? Probably like Kayla. No, of course, I'm not a blue frog. Okay, well, if you painted yourself blue and you came to me, would you be a blue frog then? No, Kayla, really ridiculous. What if you jumped up and down on the floor like a frog and you said, Rivet, would you be a blue frog then? No. Okay, what if you told everyone that you're a blue frog? Everyone told you you're a blue frog. They started laughing at you, pointing at you, telling you that you're a blue frog. You're painted blue and you're hopping up and down and you're saying, Rivet, would you be a blue frog then? No. Look. No matter what happens in your life, no matter who says anything to you, no matter what identity somebody wants to put in place, always remember that you are not a blue frog. Always remember that you have the ability to become whoever the hell you want to be. Remember that you have the ability to dream so freaking big and that no one and nothing could ever get in your way because there's no way in hell that myself, this little girl, that didn't think that she was anything. That was a waitress IHOP. IHOP waitress that worked graveyard shifts. That had a baby at 19 years old. That was um, almost killed by my ex-husband. That went through trial and tribulation over and over and over and over again. And hit like breakdown after breakdown and breakdown. Would be sitting here today, you know just partnered with, you know, a multi-million dollar company and would be in a place where I can affect and and pour into and inspire women every single day. There's no way that I would be able to do that if I ever listened to the people around me that told me that I couldn't, that told me that I shouldn't, and that told me that I was not good enough. There's no way. And I hear on sales calls every single day from you ladies. 
I hear that you're working in a corporate job and that your superior is five years younger than you telling you that you're not good enough. I hear that maybe your partner next to you um, at your firm is making more money than you and has less experience than you. I hear that you didn't close a deal and the person next to you didn't close a deal, but he still got to go out with the boys after work and they got mad at you and they told you to do extra work. I hear the stories all the time. I hear about you being hit on and it being inappropriate. I hear about, you know, you getting frustrated that they just don't understand you. Have you ever felt misunderstood? Have, has anybody ever told you that you're something that you're not? Has anybody ever looked at you and made you feel inadequate, made you feel not good enough? Because baby girl, the only thing I could do is tell you that you're worthy of the life that you want, that there's something inside of you that's so incredibly special, that's so incredibly worthy, that's so deserving to be loved, to be seen, to be heard. If I can like come into your world and and just you know shake you up and let you understand the truth which is that you're a child of god and that you're important and that you're worthy i wish i could i wish you can hear me right now i wish this could plant a small seed in your heart in your life this podcast is more than just sales information this is your daily your weekly reminder that you are more than what you are allowing in your life right now that there's something great on the inside of you that's just craving to get out that wants something more that wants to become more that wants to make more money that wants to do more that wants to change other people's lives that wants to give back in some way sometimes we can get so selfish sometimes we keep thinking about ourselves and how we're not where we want to be yet or we're not good enough or this happened to me this happened to me this happened to me but you don't understand Kayla because this and this and this and this like no no there gets to be more for you and if I could go back and I could talk to that 14 little girl that 14 year old little girl my little self and and have a conversation with her I think the very first thing that I would do is just hug her and tell her that I love her and that she's so worthy of getting what she wants in her life. That she doesn't have to do anything to be loved. That love can never go away from her or be taken away from her because she is love. And how could someone take away who you are? They can't. They can't take away your essence. They can't. And I would tell her to be strong in the moments that she felt like her world was crashing down around her. I would tell her that she is smart and beautiful and she's strong. And on those days that she feels like she can't make it, to take a deep breath and keep going because there's another little girl out of there that needs her. I would tell her that she has every single thing inside of her to be able to succeed if she really wanted to. I would tell her that on the days that she's disappointed to look up I would tell her to spend time with God more. I would tell her to have moments for herself more that she doesn't need to prove anything. I would tell her that the silence is where she hears the most creative and most powerful things. I would tell her that I'm going to be with her every step of the way. I'm going to tell her that I'll never leave her and that I always have her back. I'll tell her on the nights that she cries herself to sleep that there's going to be brighter days. I'll tell her that real love is coming if she waits and pours into herself and loves herself. I'll tell her to rise like the phoenix because she has something so special inside of her and she gets to create something really magical in this world. I'll tell her to study because the skills that she needs is what she's going to be paid for. She's paid on the value that's brought into the marketplace and if she could increase her skills even more, she'll be even more valuable. I'll tell her that her ego gets to die every step of the way because this journey is not about her. It's about the women's lives that she's going to affect around her. And I'll tell her that forgiveness is going to be the hardest thing that she's ever going to be able to do. But when she finally does it, she'll finally feel free of all the burden and all the pain and all the frustration that's coming up inside of her. That forgiving herself would be the biggest thing that she could possibly do in order to feel 
free enough to be able to create what she wants to create in this world. And I'm speaking to somebody right now. I'm speaking to the woman that's listening to this that hasn't been given permission to fully step into her power. That you know that possibly there's more for you. You know that possibly you've been playing small. You know possibly that like God has created something so special for your life and all you need to do is walk in faith. But for some reason you keep thinking about fear of not making it or not being good enough or what if it doesn't work or what if, what if, what if. And what if you actually gave yourself the opportunity to step into faith rather than fear? What if you gave yourself permission to become the woman that you know that you're meant to be inside? The woman that you know has a gift and has a story to tell. That you've used your pain as your purpose. That you can be able to share insight for another one, another person, another child, another young woman out there that might need to hear from you. I don't know if this resonates with you or not, but I felt like the need to share with you that we're all human and that I, just like you, have been through some really shitty situations in my life. I'm not perfect. I don't try to be perfect. In fact, I've royally fucked up many times and I'll fuck up probably many, many more times. <laughs> and with each time that I mess up royally, I get to learn something new about myself. I've learned that my uh, vulnerability is the biggest thing that can help people resonate with me. And even though I don't feel really comfortable talking about mistakes that I made when I was 14 years old, it makes me feel bad. It makes me feel, um, you know, guilty, even though I really didn't do anything. I was taught that, you know, I was not a good person for something that I didn't do. And I was, and I was shown that for even many, many, many years in high school that it became an identity of mine. It became something where I always felt like that I was not good enough or that I was not worthy of having real love in my life or being really cherished. And that identity allowed me to lower my standards in more than just one area of my life. It made me lower my standards in the way that people treated me. It made me lower my standards in relationships. It made me lower my standards in business made me lower my standards for myself and what I would expect for myself. I stepped into so much irresponsibility in my life and I really ruined bridges and messed up things. When you realize that your mission is bigger than you, it's the opportunity for you to grow up, the opportunity for you to take responsibility for all your crap, all your shit, and for you to start selflessly laying down your ego and allowing your your mess, allowing your story, allowing your pain to purposefully serve whoever might possibly be listening because I feel like I'm supposed to. And if you feel like you're supposed to be doing something more or you're supposed to be sharing your story or your message, I, I encourage you to do so. I promise you that there's one person out there that needs to hear from you today. And whoever this one person is that might be listening right now, I just really honor you. Um, you know, I, I honor you for listening to me. I honor you for taking the time to possibly look at areas of your life that could improve as a woman in business and sales and learning how to make money and maybe taking care of your family or whatever you're doing this for. Like, I honor you for finding the time to want to grow. There's so many people out there that don't want to grow. And when you are not growing, you're dying. And the thing is, is that dying is subtle. It's so subtle. Complacency is the, the worst thing that could possibly happen to us. Complacency, being comfortable. You don't realize that you were in a prison until it's too late. What if you give your, the, yourself the opportunity to really live what are you proud of yourself for today? What can you be proud of yourself for today? Just one thing today that you can be proud of yourself for because progress makes you happy. You start honoring your progress. What is one thing this week that you're proud of yourself for? What is one thing this past month that you're proud of yourself for? Can you start acknowledging you for the work that you're putting in? Or are you to keep finding the things that you do wrong? To keep things that you... Or keep finding things that you feel like you're not doing good enough at. 
and keep being hard on yourself and hard on yourself and hard on yourself. And the next day you're harder on yourself and you're harder on yourself. And the next day, pretty soon, I promise you, you're going to be tired, mentally exhausted, frustrated, and unable to move forward, feeling depressed, feeling sad, feeling anxious, feeling frustrated. Gratitude will literally change your life. Being a place where you're progressing will really change your life. And contribution, focusing out on others, giving to others, making somebody else's day will literally change your world because you're not living just for you. You're living for a purpose. You're living for more. Um, and, um, you know, I hope today is okay because I just really felt not like I wanted to do an intentional ramble, but I felt like there's just somebody out there that needs to hear how fucking and special they are. And how amazing they are. And how worthy they are. I know it's hard. I know that there's some days that really suck. And I just want to encourage you that you're meant for more than what you're doing right now. That you are, you have so many beautiful qualities about you. There's literally no one else like you. You're literally one of a kind. In fact, it's a one in a trillion chance that you were even born. So why you? Why are you here right now? What is your purpose why were you born? Because I promise you, yes, you are just that special. It is, I promise you, there's something really unique about you. Something so beautiful, something so unlike anybody else. And the moment that you get to embrace this, the moment that you get to fully accept and fully love the woman that you are, you feel like you start tapping into color. It's like the world before was black and white. And when you fully love yourself, you tap into this new colorful realm of possibility. Life is sweeter. It smells sweeter. It looks sweeter. It feels better. And this can only come with work, which is why I so honor, you know, my program and like what we do. Learning sales is one thing, but if you feel mentally fucked up on the inside, you will not perform. And I see this over and over and over and over again with the women that I encounter and the women that I meet. Maybe you start doing really good, you start hitting quota, you start performing, it starts getting really good, and then something in your life mentally shuts you down. Or maybe you just don't feel like it that day. Or maybe you're in your period and you feel like you're dying inside. And it's like you're trying to be on all the freaking time without giving yourself grace and giving yourself the ability to relax and the ability to honor your body and yourself. Like... Sales is more than just a, an action game. It's a mental game. Do you know how to heal your stuff so that you can show up and the best version of you? Because the whole intention of being able to sell is being able to change people, which means it's going to require a new level of leadership for you. And in order to go to another level, you have to be willing to peel back layers of yourself, which is uncomfortable because it means that you get to heal, which means you get to bring all your bad shit up to the surface and face it and be willing to look it in the eye and say, what do I get to do to heal from this? And that's not easy because the shadow work is never, ever, 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 ever over. It's never over. And if you've done tons of work, there's still more. There's still layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. And your willingness to consistently find time for you to meditate, to pray, to get into the stillness and ask yourself, what do I need right now? To ask yourself, what area in my life can I um, grow in? Can I honor? Can I heal more in? Without that continuation of work, you go into autopilot, which is so dangerous because that's when complacency creeps in. And then pretty soon you're doing the same day every single day over and over and over again. And you live Groundhog Day and you think that you're really living life and you're not. I challenge you to find a way that you can be stretched today. Find a way that you can be stretched this week. When I say stretch, I mean, what's a way that you can stretch yourself? A way that you can allow yourself to grow more, to uh, see more, to become more. And um, let's say like you don't feel comfortable getting on camera. Well, like maybe you're stretching me going live five times this week. Maybe you don't like cold calling. Maybe your stretch is to call, you know, 100 people cold calling this week. Maybe you haven't taken a day for yourself in a really long time. Maybe your stretch is to go get your nails and your toes done this week. Maybe you haven't allowed yourself to really honor yourself 
And maybe it's time for you to just get in some silence, to journal, to meditate, to pray. Maybe you need to have some alone time with God and even avoiding those conversations for a little bit. Maybe you get to, you know, honor somebody else and make somebody else feel special because it's been about you for a little bit. Maybe you get to really spend some quality time with your kids because they need to see you and spend time with you. Whatever it is, I challenge you to do your stretch. And um, please comment below, you know, what your stretch is and how you're going to stretch into that because we want to support you here. I feel like, you know, um, real conversations really get to be had. We all deal with shit all day long. And the best way that we can do is to support each other and honor each other and to loop this back around from the very beginning. How do I get into a place where I'm honoring women and working with women when I swear I, I was like women kept triggering the crap out of me and it wasn't my fault I mean it was something that happened when I was 14 years old but for some reason I just didn't trust women I felt like they were gonna lie to me or they were stabbing the back or they were gonna all come up to me and be mean to me and and I was never gonna be good enough and yada 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 you know and it wasn't until I started doing some intense deep trauma healing around this area that I started being more open to it you know, uh, allowing myself to uh, somatically move it out of my body, a lot of yelling, a lot of catharsis, a lot of crying, a lot of emotionally getting it out. And, you know, trauma healing and, and therapy is really different. Therapy is more Western medicine. Uh, trauma healing, you know, somatically is more Eastern. So somatically being able to physically move it out of your body, um, you know, through yelling, through crying, through dancing, through movement, you know, getting trauma, because trauma is um, stored in your cells scientifically seven generations deep. So not only am I processing my trauma, but I'm processing my mother's and my grandmother's and my grandma grandmother's uh, like all the way back seven generations and doing this deep work and, and months of this and months of this of being able to cry and pour my heart out and, and allow me to start reframing the way I perceived, um, you know, women and the way that I started perceiving, you know, their intentions with me. And again, this was not an easy thing to do. This was really, really hard, really, really difficult. Um, but it allowed me to soften my heart to start seeing their greatness. Has a woman ever walked by you and make you feel uncomfortable inside? Maybe she's wearing a short dress and you're like, oh, or maybe like she just looked at you weird and you're like, oh, that girl's mean to me or whatever it is. Like all oh, that's trauma. And so if anybody ever triggers you or you feel emotionally shut down, you're like, oh, God. Um, you get to look at that because that is your body telling you that you still have more healing to do. So what I would do is I would start, you know, being around women and if I felt like weird about it or I maybe feel jealous or maybe feel like she didn't like me or whatever it is, I just sat with it for a second and I would look at her and I would ask myself the question, what's the masterpiece that I see in her? When I started humanizing her, when I started saying this woman in front of me has probably had a lot of bad days, she's probably had horrific day. She's probably had her heart broken before. She's probably been through the worst times, the best times. Maybe she's been in love before. And I started thinking about her life and the story that she had. And when I started humanizing this and when I started seeing the masterpiece that she is, it started making me feel like I could connect to her, like I could see her, like I can honor her. And when I did that, all my insecurities and all my ego of not being good enough or she didn't like me or or, uh, you know, being judged by her or whatever started melting away because I wasn't thinking about me anymore. I was thinking about her and honoring her. So interesting how this works. If you're constantly triggered by a certain type of person, can you see the magic in them? Can you see the masterpiece in them? Can you find the one great thing in them, the greatness in them? Can you allow yourself to do this? And the reason why this is so important is because if you're consistently triggered by people, they all have your power. I talk to my daughter about this all the time. Don't allow anybody to ever take your power away from you. What I mean by this is that you're walking around with all your balls of fire. Like you are like one fiery unit. And anytime somebody pisses you off, it's like you give them a little bit of your fire. Anyone frustrates you, give them a little bit of your fire. Let's say somebody cuts you off in traffic and you get mad, give a little bit of their fire. Oh, somebody looked at you weird. Oh, I don't know if they like me. You give a little bit, a little bit of your fire. And by the end of you giving away all your power and all your fire, you're just like a little flame. If you could allow yourself to not emotionally give yourself away, to let things not emotionally bother you, for you to be able to process information, for you to be able to take a deep breath and say, hey, I'm going to let this go. Hey, this is not serving me. Hey, this frustration is not supporting me with what I'm trying to create here. 
hey, this person said something mean to me, but I'm going to let it go. Hey, they're probably having a bad day, you know, uh, forgive and I'm free, you know, letting that go. The more fire that you can keep, the more power that you can keep, and that means the more creative energy you have in order to create what you want. The more energy that you have to spend time with your kids, the more energy that you have in order to be able to get up in the morning, go to the gym or whatever it is that you want to do. You are in control of your life. I should have never let those girls take all my power away in high school because it took me probably five or six years in order to get it back. But I didn't have the right tools in place then and, and like I have right now. Who in your life currently has your power? What situations currently have your power? And can you allow yourself in order to get your power back? Can you forgive and let them go? Can you forgive the situation and be free from it? Can you put up more boundaries for yourself to where you're not crossing your boundaries and giving away your energy and time when you really don't need to? You get to have every single thing that you want in your life. You're worthy of it all. I see you. I honor you. If you're still listening, I honor you as well. Uh, sometimes I could be all over the place, but I feel like it's really important for us to talk about things that we don't normally talk about. Please make sure you're subscribed, you know, with wherever you're listening and share this podcast with a girlfriend that you know um, that would benefit from this. I really love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear any area in your life that you're personally struggling with um, so that we can talk about that, so that we can give real insight on that. Um, you are not alone. You deserve to have a support group. You deserve to have women around you that love you, that see you. And if you've ever struggled with women too, like I completely understand where you're coming from, just know that you get to have women in your corner that see you. You get to have a village. It takes a village. You don't get to do this alone. And you are worthy of calling in all the amazing, magical things that you want in your life. The money, the relationship, the health, the family, a close relationship with God. Whatever it is that you're craving right now, you're so, so freaking worthy of it. I love you. I'll see you in the next episode. Make sure you subscribe here. and. Um, I will see you soon. Bye guys.